Hello once again, my dear viewers, to Infamous Animation, where... Ah! <laughs> Elm Janet Forest! Okay, this is the first Croatian animated feature film, and apparently it was quite popular back in its day over there. So, of course, we brought it over for an English dub that used to be shown on the Disney Channel. Eh, really, that's all I know about this movie, other than it got a sequel and it was never widely distributed. I want to make it clear that, by watching this video, you are resigned to the shame that is knowing of the existence of the Elm Chanted Forest. This isn't going to be easy for me, so let's just get it over with. If you listen very carefully, the wind will speak to you. I am Baron Burr. I ride the wind. A burr is a seedling, of course. A promise of tomorrow. So what is Tasmanian Devil's mentally handicapped brother going to be our narrator or something? Baron Burr tells us that there is a magical elm tree that protects the forest. But now there is also a dark power. Everyone run for your lives! The scary strobe lights are attacking! Ah! Anyway, whatever the hell evil forces there are scares away all the beavers in the forest, because they are builders who are directly opposite to the destructive nature of evil. Beavers aren't the only creatures that build houses and shit. Why is he singling them out? The enchanted elm waits, as only trees can wait for the coming of an outsider who has been promised. Oh god, that's pathetic. But the tree decides to let there be bullshit and pokes him with magical leaves. The last remaining beaver in the forest approaches the artist and magic spews from his brush and creates images on the canvas. And I am Peter Pallet, artist and lover of nature. But how can I be talking to a beaver? You slept under the mystic elm. Now you are elm chanted, and the whole forest can speak to you. So apparently, getting poked by a magic tree not only makes you Dr. Doolittle, but it makes you a cheating artist. Meeting you, feeling your kindness, I know that love rules here. <laughs> My sentiments exactly. The crow reports of this to his master, Emperor Spine, who looks like a satanic clown mixed with a Jewish stereotype. So, Thistle, once again I am cut to the quick. Come to the point. We knew of him, great Emperor Spine. Cripes! I thought that was a girl! Right now, he is at the Beaver's Lodge. Beaver? Did you say... Did you say... Beaver? Too quick! Did I not order all beavers executed? Do you mind? Meanwhile, animals are lining up to have their portraits painted. I know two artists want only the most beautiful models, and uh, how shall I say it? C'est moi. I am honored, lovely lady. Oh, great. They sped up the video so the dialogue would match. How wonderful. Thistle comes by and gives him Emperor Spine's invitation to lunch, but a little hedgehog tells him to avoid the evil emperor. And here he is now. World famous soothsayer, Baron Burr. How may I be of service, Emperor Spine? Does this guy even know what an indoor voice is? 
He implies that Peter may be the prophesied painter who would destroy Emperor Spine and his cactus kingdom. But what can be done, your grace? He is no longer with the beaver. Did you say... Did you say... Did you say... The beaver! Shut up. Thistle is sent to capture Peter at whatever the cost. He recruits Buddy Bear to help him out. Please, Buddy. I need your assistance. Give me some running room, boy. Lighten up. When you're feeling kind of lonely and a bottle up inside. When you're a little hot. Huh? What? 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 Why are they breaking into song? What's, what's the purpose of- What is this? I don't even! Oh, excuse me. Can you give me a clue? Soon, Thistle and Buddy Bear find Peter. Now's our chance, buddy. Sick him! Buddy is coerced into being a good guy because of Peter's cheating brush, leaving Thistle shit out of luck, leading Emperor Spine to send his living weapons to go destroy parts of the forest to whittle away potential hiding places. By the way, if it feels like I'm rushing this, it's only because this is the actual pacing of the movie. The scenes are so hastily set up and executed, and there is no atmosphere building, no quiet moments where silence can do the talking for us. Nothing. Emperor Spine goes to talk with the Firebug, a fire elemental, to convince him to burn down some of the forest. When he refuses, Spine taunts him into throwing fireballs out into the woods. Good god, look at those flames. Those have got to be some of the worst fire effects I've ever seen. But luckily, Peter uses his brush to generate clouds that start raining on the fire. So, basically it's a deus ex machina brush. How did this happen? Emperor Spine tricked me. It was an accident. Accidents with fire can be prevented if we are careful. It is so. Only you can prevent forest fires. Sadly, many animals lost their homes, and Peter and the others start building houses for them. There must be something wrong that makes him so angry. If only we knew what it is. Maybe he's just a big prick. We cut to a water elemental who sees his waterways have been flooded by the rains. He's about to do something about it, but decides to sleep on it like the lazy bastard that he is. Suddenly... This is nice and all, but I'd like to move on with the story now, please. Okay, you guys out there watching this, you've got two guesses as to whether or not this has anything to do with the plot, and the first guess doesn't count. So Emperor Spine approaches with similar requests of Neptar the Sea King. Beauty rest. <laughs> He'd have to sleep for a thousand years. Okay, that's kind of funny. However, Spine is met with similar hostility. Wait! Was that music from Jaws? And like the firebug, Neptar lets his element carelessly harm the forest while he's trying to hurt Emperor Spine. And like last time, Peter uses his brush to save the day.
But now these powers are failing. What shall I do? The enchanted elm's gift is for a short time only. Your destiny must be fulfilled by sunrise tomorrow, when your power will be completely gone. Thank you, Mr. Exposition. So Peter goes to Thistle to learn more about Emperor Spine. He is told of the prophecy that foretells his role in Spine's downfall. What about the part that says, his hopes will flower? I don't know. Do not the cactus plants sometimes have the blossoms? Fifi is right. Thistle, has the Cactus King ever had flowers on his body? No, never. This could be it. Spine is angry and mean because he's frustrated. He's never fulfilled his nature. Whoa there, son. Then all we got to do is make flowers grow on him? That's it? <laughs> of course! He's trying to burn down the whole forest to catch one man because he's a late bloomer. <laughs> Thistle says he'll make a potion that can make flowers bloom on him, and Peter and the others start collecting ingredients, when Thistle is taken captive and Peter falls into a hole trying to catch him. Baron Burr tells the beaver that the two are taken to a cell and underground, respectively. So, Thistle, my littlest thorn, you betray your emperor. They mean you no harm. They want to help you. At the beaver saloon... Beaver? Did you say... Did you say... Did you say... Beaver? It's funny because beaver means vagina. Thistle learns that Spine is going to unleash a giant machine at sunrise that'll make the logging vehicle from Fern Gully look like a hatchet. Underground, Peter is captured by some rogue mushrooms. I am not a mushroom. I am an artist. Let me go. There are many kinds of mushrooms. If you're not one now, you soon will be. Oh my god, is that the guy who voiced Mr. Smee in the White Rabbit? Well, no. No, it isn't. The guy who played those two died 15 years before this movie was released. It's just a shameless imitator. I do not want to be a mushroom. I demand to be set free. <laughs> I will leave Michael J. Mushroom in charge. <laughs> what, are they gonna voice him like Marty McFly or something? No! No, 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 no! Go back in your hole, movie! Go back in your hole! That's it! I can't take it anymore! I'm turning to drugs! Maybe this will make the movie a bit funnier.
shit just got too real. The beaver breaks Thistle loose before he is executed with the help of a mole, and Buddy Bear gets Peter out before he starts getting the really bad trips. They finish the potion and make their way to Spine's castle. They have a shapely female fox tempt some guards. Did he just make a jerking off gesture towards her? With the guards out of the way and Peter's magic failing fast, Buddy Bear tries to get the drawbridge down. Son. He eventually opens the drawbridge, and they fight their way inside. Peter has little trouble getting the potion into Spine's mouth, and when he does, he turns pink, sprouts flowers, and turns all of his thorns into gardens, as well as his forest crusher into a merry-go-round. They all have a chintzy celebration, and a female beaver returns so that the loner can have a happy ending. Insert double entendre here. <laughs> ah... Soon there will be many. There will be many. You can say it now, my cactus king. Many beavers. So Peter's magic disappears, and he has a tearful farewell with the forest. And the creatures partake in one of those old fashioned Disney style songs that used to bookend their movies. But since this just appears at the end, with everyone popping up for no apparent reason, its sudden sincerity feels very, very pointless. <sighs> this is the worst. I mean it. This is the worst animated movie I myself have ever watched. The art direction and character designs are mostly uncreative and lack detail. The character animation is below average at best. The pacing is rushed between mindless scenes that have nothing to do with the overall plot, which makes it feel paradoxically long and uninteresting. The characters have no development, and the protagonists rarely affect the plot. The English dialogue is trite and saccharine, the songs serve no purpose whatsoever and come right out of left field, and the whole movie reeks of a studio trying to replicate the success of the Disney musical formula, and then failing at it. I've seen movies that were bad due to overambition, or just being a bad ripoff, or having a lack of characterization, and all those other important storytelling mechanics, but I've never seen a movie so mindless in its ineptitude as this movie. I actually feel pain watching this movie, and I'm not trying to be funny. Bottom line. Life's too short for the Elm Chanted Forest. I have done a disservice to you as an audience by even bringing it to your attention. I'm Shogun Gino, and this was Infamous Animation.